Hi, everyone, and welcome to this special episode of the Passive House Podcast, recorded in Terrytown, New York, at the FiasCon 2021 Passive House Conference. Before we get started, I want to thank Fias for putting on the conference and for coordinating with us on these interviews, as well as NYSERDA for serving as conference partner with Fias and community partner with us here at the Passive House Accelerator. Thank you, too, to Rockwell North America. Their generous support underwrote all of these interviews, as well as our coverage of the conference. With that, please enjoy my interview with Shannon Pendleton of Sanderson Sustainable Design and Michael Ingui of Baxt Ingui Architects. <laughs> So I have Shannon Pendleton of Sanderson Sustainable Design here, as well as Michael Ingui from Bax Ingui Architects and founder of the Passive House Accelerator. It's great to have you both here. It's been fun to hang out. Cool. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks. So we are here to share uh, impressions from the conference. So, um, and maybe we can start with impressions from the panel that you just presented at and some, some of the uh, insights that you were sharing and that were part of that discussion. It was an amazing panel. First of all, FIAS put together a pre, they always put together a prefab panel. They have a history, right, with, with pushing prefab. Right. Because they really think it's going to accelerate the movement and scale us up to where we need to be. Yeah. And uh, to be on the stage with Graham and Tessa was pretty awesome. You know, you, it's nice to stand on someone's shoulders, you know, and, and be on that same stage. So that was very fun. In terms of the discussion, um, it ran the gamut, you know, it's really an untapped resource that can take so many roads that the discussion in each presentation, you could look at it as bespoke for each presentation, or you could look at it as a totality of all the opportunities that are there because it's so untapped. It was really fun. Awesome. And Michael, what what have been your key takeaways from the conference? I'll give you those, but first I'm going to give you my <laughs> takeaway from that session. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Because uh, I, it, was, it was one of the sessions I was really looking forward to. I mean, I was looking forward to a whole bunch. I, mean, I came in a day early and saw Tim McDonald, which, you know, right. yeah. blew me out of the water like it always does. I mean, uh, and then... Um, but this was this was just as good. It was incredible. I mean, a couple of things. One is uh, the way they laid it out was so clear. And I don't do a lot of prefab. I want to do prefab. I'm doing one now. But um, but but the way they they described things, the way they were able to show kind of a combination of gorgeous projects along with um, the methods, uh, the or the early delivery system, so many um, so many important tricks. And so many tasks. Uh, I think uh, it just just the list of what you should do, what you should expect from one to ten. It's and it personifies what I love about all of these conferences. But uh, but definitely the Fias conference where where you you come here and people are just giving away this information. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if I'm going to do prefab to the level that Shannon's doing it right now, well, I'm going to know that I'm going to switch up my process. I don't I don't have to learn that on the fly. I mean, how? I mean, that's priceless. I mean, that that that, that saves tens of thousands of dollars in time and frustration. So it was a fantastic session um, for that, but also just beautiful projects. So a lot of times you'll, you'll think of prefab and you're like, oh, you know, is it all, you know, you know, does it look like containers or right. you know, something where you right. can, no, I mean, you could, you would never know. Yeah. Just gorgeous yeah. projects. It was really style agnostic, right? And it was interesting because the two perspectives that were really trying to get to the same goal where you can do a custom prefab project where it's a one-off, it's really bespoke, and then you can have a replicable uh, project that is trying to attack all of the systemic problems that we have that architecture could address. Right. I mean, you know, right. so two completely different project types trying to do the same thing because when you share something that's new for so many people who maybe want to try it and haven't done it, to give them just the little tips like, oh, if you want to try it, you can do it. This was our first time and we did it, you know, but we ran into these things. So make sure you prepare for that. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's more important to share those than the project itself, you know, because that's what's going to continue and live on and, and help people accelerate and build faster. And honestly, Prefab doesn't care about passive house. 
But Passive House cares about prefab, right? And if we don't prefab, someone else will, and they'll do it without Passive House. They'll do it to code. And then we'll have a, an acceleration of those projects instead. Right, right. So, That's you know, a great point. It's going to yeah. be at a scale previously unimagined. Right, right. We so need to imagine it. Right, that's make sure we make sure we're uh, um, aiming that that train at the, the right direction. I, I don't know. That's the, a weird metaphor. Yeah, it could you be have a to train. lay tracks. It works. I don't know. I you like have to have, it. But if you aim a train, you have to it's do the carbon, tracks too. It's, it's kind of complicated. Light, you know, it's not a plane. So. <laughs> but that is a good segue to the first question: was uh, you know, what's my impression of the conference? Yeah. And uh, I, I have to say, uh, I uh, I had a lot of expectations coming in. Um, uh, I saw a number of the projects that were going to be um, shown prior, and. Uh, and it really it it delivered. Uh, it were it just in a different place, and the conference really showed that clearly. Projects of all different types. Uh, you know, you know, we've we've got all we've got schools, we've got uh, gymnasiums, we've got um, uh, a cidery, we've got uh, multifamily, uh, we've got affordable, we've got market rate, and so th th there's no longer the question of like, can you do it passive? No. Um, it's not even a question of, you know, how do I do it, but how do I do it cheaper? I mean, they're all doing it already. So what was great about the conference is these are people doing it. Uh, they're, they're doing it, they're making it happen. The buildings are gorgeous. In all the presentations, it wasn't just like, oh, here's how you do it, here's what my, my tape and my issues. They're talking about the building amenities. Um, you know, the market rate developer today, for example, yeah. um, who is describing the building amenities and what people are going to get when they lived in the building and how they were going right. to feel about the fresh air. And A luxury market rate, yeah, apartment building in New York, yeah. I mean, so he might as well have been talking about any other building. Yeah, yeah. it happens to be passive. Yeah. Uh, so it is. Um, it's, it shows you where we are. Yeah. We're, we're at that inflection point where we know how to do it. The roadmap's there. Uh, people just have to follow the roadmap. And again, not to go back to it, but the prefab uh, panel uh, that, that I was in was just that. But not only did we see the, um, um, th uh, that I attended, by the way, <laughs> the, one I, the one I now ran, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> but the one I attended, I mean, um, it, I mean, for me who wants to, I want to learn about prefab. I saw beautiful projects. I was inspired, but they also provided a roadmap. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, it's been... It's been great, really inspirational. Yeah, and that the market back to that market rate project in in uh, New York that we were just talking about. That's at, delivered at one percent cost premium, and then right. we heard we heard from POA in Boston about all these amazing affordable housing projects that are being delivered at one percent cost premium. And that's it's, the magic. Yeah, right? it's, it's, you know, it's, it's what they always said. They said basically, the more people did it, yeah. the more people would know how to do it, the more products would be sold for it, the less expensive we would get. And we're already there. So now the question is just, you know, let's just do it. Let's yeah. build more. Let's yeah. keep going. Yeah. It's, uh, again, it, really inspirational because you had a lot of people, you know, just talking about the attendees. I mean, they're all doers. You're talking yeah. to, I mean, all the different people who came. These are each individual. I mean, they probably could have all done a session. I mean, these are people who are really already doing things. Right. And, you, I mean, just you learn so much just from the side conversations. It's, uh, it's been good. You know what's nice about the people, because it is really about the people, right, is it, Passive House has become a culture of sharing, right, that yeah. is, yeah. you know, really reflecting this kind of populist movement. And in the best sense of the term. In the best sense <laughs> of the term. Yes, thank you. And what I like about FIAS right now, especially, and a lot of the conferences that are sessions that were at this conference, is they're investigating themselves and reinventing themselves in order to adapt to the disruptions that are about to occur because this is going to become commonplace. So it goes into code, it goes into grids. The microgrid session was incredible. Yeah, that's what I just heard. Yeah. I'm so sorry I missed it. It was wonderful. Yeah. Like if you go back and watch the recording, that was one with the camera on it. So yeah. please see it. Um, because they talked about the difference between a nano grid and a micro grid. And then they also gave the tips and tricks that you're talking about, which were like, okay, right now I run conduit to every roof, even if they're not going to do solar, because in the future they're going to do solar. And I run wiring to the garage, because eventually they're going to have an yeah. EV, yeah. you know, and they're going to want to plug it in there. So just run the wiring now. Well, they were like, run conduit to your neighbors because you're going to be on a neighborhood grid. Uh -huh. Bury it uh -huh. now. And I'm like, yeah. 
I will never not build a project without that again. So like that's a really simple example of it. But when you get into the code and you get into the workflow disruption, like we were talking about the prefab creates, if you don't have someone to warn you about that, or to even brainstorm with someone about who is passionate, who will share, you can't level up. And then you also can't give it to the people that it really matters for, which are the college kids and the kids in trade school who we're passing the baton to right now, who are literally passing the baton to our kids, who are passing it to the kids in grade school, who are passing it to the babies they're playing with. We're building time machines and it's for them to give them time. And so we have to make sure that this sharing that's occurring happens in the most productive ways and in as many areas as we can because they don't have time to waste learning the same lessons, making the same mistakes. That's why we share. We want to save each other from the things that we don't need to repeat and give each other the tools that we need right now, like yesterday. <laughs> said, well said. I also yeah. really like that uh, a lot of uh, manufacturers use the conference as a jumping off point. Uh, which you know they, they always used to do, but it's been so long. So we had a number of different manufacturers announce new things at the conference. Yeah. And you know they'll be on their website, and we'll show it on the accelerator, right. and you know it, it'll keep going. But it's just something about being in person. Uh -huh. And you know you could tell they they ramped up you know their promotional material, and and some of it's really great. Yeah. I mean some of it's really going to make a pretty significant difference. So just kind of going back to the market transformation that Shannon was saying. I mean. It's happening so fast and such an electric atmosphere and part of that is we're all we're all back together again. <laughs> it's yeah. it's so nice to like just see each other. You know, not not in the box. Uh, yeah. Uh, the joke that's been going on is people have legs. We have legs. <laughs> and then the products are the same thing. It's like, oh this is real. <laughs> yeah, and it's right. this it's actually this big and I can see it and I can play with it. How fun is that? My my, my favorite one uh, favorite one that happens continuously is oh my god, Zach, you're so tall. <laughs> Always. I, that was me. That's Zach. But uh, I'm sorry, Zach. We're going we're to go right back at you because I don't know if anybody interviewed you today. <laughs> so. it's, it's okay. I, you Zach, know, what are your big so, so you've you talked to a lot of people. I have. And I, sometimes and, sometimes I take more airspace than I should. So you probably, the listeners have probably heard plenty of me. Uh, you know, one of the, uh, you know, I, I've had a very unique experience at the conference because I've just, I've, I've been going to plenary sessions and then all, every, all of the other time I've been spending interviewing people, which is, actually a really cool way to experience a conference and and I do get little bite like the the key takeaways that people have presented um, or shared in the presentations they'll share that with me so it's been it's been a um, wonderful um, one of the I have just a funny little one a little nugget that I want to share and it came from the keynote from NYSERDA uh, at the beginning of the, in the opening plenary and and um, she just meant she just dropped this when she was describing uh, the mission of NYSERDA around around uh, moving to high performance building and passive house, and that is that we're moving from conventional polluting buildings to passive house or high performance buildings, right? Yeah. So that notion that it's not just conventional buildings, which I've said probably ten million times, you know, you know, uh, during uh, during my time thinking and talking about passive house, but it's conventional polluting bu buildings. Yeah. And who wants to be in a conventional polluting building or support conventional polluting buildings or, or anything? Conventional so, unhealthy buildings. So, and yeah. and the, my conversation with James Kepner kind of, uh, uh, I, he riffed on that in, in his presentation, not that term, but the idea of the power of language um, uh, as we're speaking to building owners and, and things and, and how important that is. Uh, so when we, when, so um, I always like to like, Pick up these little one, these little things like, oh, I'm going to say conventional polluting buildings now. Well, yeah, you know? then, then think Absolutely. of that. Yeah, think about that. You know, we, we were always talking about conventional construction costs versus passive house costs. Right, right. So it's so if you just said con right. con conventional unhealthy conventional you right, know, right, polluting right, right. versus you can, passive house, right. all of a sudden you know, yeah, here's the cost I of building a conventional polluting building. Here's the cost of doing a passive house. No, no, yeah. no. I want the polluting building. <laughs> Can I have some bad air quality, please? I want to save please? the one percent, please, yeah. for the polluting. Ah, the smell of fumes. <laughs> yes, I want that. Well, we should wrap. We should wrap this up. We have we have another interview uh, uh, scheduled, and then we have the keynote from Joe Steebrook that Which I think all of us are, are really looking forward to. So, Shannon and Michael, thanks so much for your time, and and it's, you know, my collaborators. This is it's awesome to get a chance to to. Uh, 
debrief on the conference. Thanks, Zach. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.